Alright, everything's working. Yay! Audio levels look good. Um, gonna turn down the mic a little bit. Cause it did. It looked like it peaked right there. Okay. Hey, this is part three, and we are gonna get into Prince Rod's pants. <laughs> That's the goal. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh no. No 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 no. I want to load. And this one. Yes. All right. We're gonna learn the truth. The deep, dark truth. I forgot what the. What are we learning? <laughs> Anyways, the truth. Uh, my only answer is silence. I shift my gaze to Rod, but he avoids my eyes. What's going on? Princess, it's very likely that this witch in the palace is looking for you. What? I cast a glamour on you a long time ago so that you would, you could remain hidden from magical eyes. I did it to protect you, but this was, but this witch in question can see through the spell I've cast on you. It is my belief that they are actively looking for you. I close my eyes and massage the temples on my head as if as I feel a headache coming on. Wait, you said that the witches want to see their curses unbroken, but this sounds as if they have another motive altogether. What reasons could they have for trailing me? Uh, the T the TB has been without a bear for a long time ever since the end of the war. A new bear, however, will soon arise and the crystal is ready to support them. Some of the witches, the wicked ones, want to make sure that the TB continues to spread darkness, even with this new bear in charge. Okay, but what does that have to do with me? Dolora, uh, Dolora crosses her arms, her expression grim. The title of the bear is passed down from one descendant to the next. The princess, the last TB bear, was the late queen of Angel, your mother. Oh shit! That explains a lot, actually. I feel my blood go cold. What? As you are the queen's daughter, you are the next heir. That actually makes so much sense and clears up a lot of stuff, for me at least. Come your 18th birthday, you'll inherit the title of TB Bear. Mother? A witch? Impossible. Why would you spell such a- Uh, Lucette, come on, really? There's so many signs that, that, that that's a true fact. I narrow my eyes at them, searching for some hint that they are lying to me. Delora and Parfait never turn their sad eyes away from me. Rod glances at me briefly before turning away, looking uncomfortable. Helder, your mother and I used to work together to maintain balance, but then the witch hunts drove her mad and turned her ice, uh, heart to ice. But she never used any magic. I would have known if she was a witch. It's possible you did in the past, but then it seems she erased all your memories of her true identity. Dolora was already able to ascertain that most of your memories of her had been snatched away. Hilder needed you to remain obedient so that when you finally did inherit her role as the bear, you would continue to do as she wanted. Oh my god, that explains why she wanted to brainwash her at such an early age. Wow! My thoughts feel as if they are spinning endlessly on an axis. The real reason I cursed you was to see if you are truly capable of goodness, princess. Hilda's influence clung to you even after her death, and we feared that you would continue her previous work. That Angeo 
might once again fall to darkness if you are not able to help the dark emotions in your heart. So then you cursed me because you were terrified of what I would do if I became the bear as I was. My only answer is silence. Now, now I understand. Uh, now I understand. Uh, shit. I guess I'll just use her voice when she's thinking. Now I understand why people hated me. It's because I am my mother's daughter. I cannot help but reach out to touch the pendants on my necklace as a feeling of dread washes over me. We know that there is goodness in you, princess. We only wanted you to realize it by breaking your curse. Parfait sighs, looking guilty. It was a selfish act on our part, I know. But we could not risk another great war. You believed I would have plunged the world into a war? I turned to Rod, who has yet to speak since the conversation started. Did you know about all this? Everyone knows the story of the TV witch and her daughter. Everyone except for me. I glanced down at my hands, suddenly feeling numb. I... What? Is she? That's not the conclusion I came to. I am a witch. I will become the TV's next bear. Just the thought of it makes me sick. I think back to my childhood. I can still recall the glares that everyone gave me when I was a child. They were scared of me because I was my mother's daughter. And what about the king? Did he never love me because I was the daughter of a witch? But if that is the case... If my mother was so wicked, then why did the king marry her in the first place? Hildur threatened to kill the woman that he loved. If he did not marry her, she threatened to kill Ophelia. What? Oh my god. Ophelia? So the king has loved Ophelia from the very beginning. I clenched my fist in tight fist. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I clenched my hands into tight fists. After Mother died, he was able to reunite with his true love. And since then, he has treated Emily and Rod better than he ever treated me, even though I am his daughter by blood. It's true. I want to feel angry about this revelation, but instead I feel a dreary emptiness inside of me. A heavy feeling begins to settle on my chest, suffocating my heart. He never really loved me. Who's Lizette? Rod's voice snaps me out of my thoughts, and that is when I realize that a stray tear has made it down my cheek. I quickly wipe it away with the back of my hand, angry at myself for showing this in front of them. You must be happy to see me like this. What? Your mother was made queen, and you and your sister became royals overnight. It's like something out of a fairy tale, isn't it? You thought you had the perfect life until I came back into it. I never asked for this to happen, I just wanted to. Rod suddenly moves his hand to Seppi's mouth, muffling whatever other words the splush was about to say for him. Damn it, Seppi! Actually, damn it, Rod! We're gonna get a truth bump from Seppi. Still waiting here. Got a little French administration, JP! Oh, I guess I shouldn't have read this out loud. Sorry about that, JP. Um. Sorry about that, JP. Oh, oh. Hope, we get, uh, hope it moves along faster for you. Is that a, is that a modicum with horns? <laughs> wow. JP being evil. Anyways. What is it you want to say, Rod? It does think. I can assure you, however, that the power that comes with the crowd has always been irrelevant to my family and I. So stop assuming that everyone around you is after your title or your riches. Did your time with my sister not teach you anything? 
I am about to angry retort when I suddenly stop my heart sinking. I have already recognized that Emily is more complex than I thought she was. And she was also told me she never wanted to be a princess. But, uh, my mother wouldn't have married the king if my father were still here. Dolora looks between the two of us and sighs. And here I thought your relationship had improved. Now it seems it's back to square one. I cross my arms and turn away annoyed. Do you have anything else to add to Parfait? If not, I'd like to return to the palace. Princess. Stay, uh, stay vigilant and be careful about who you trust. Trust? How do you know who I might... Uh, excuse me? How do you know who I, who I trust? What makes you even think I trust you? Damn. Damn. That... That is not nice. Lucette, take that back. The anger I was expecting earlier suddenly rises up to the surface. For all I know, Parfait and Delora could be feeding me lies, playing with me the way Delora did when she first cursed me. Come on, Lucette! I don't expect you to believe what we've told you. Perhaps it was not yet the right time to reveal everything to you, but please, you need to be careful. I stand up and look at them, my arms now hanging limply at my sides. How am I meant to trust anyone when all of you have been lying to me this entire time? They haven't lied to you, they just didn't want to spill the beans right off the bat, because you were a nice princess, and you probably wouldn't have like, believe them, anyways. Lucette. If you don't believe us, then try asking the king who Hilder truly is. That's true. That's probably the best way. But then, like, she's a maid. What? I don't think she has the authority to ask him. I never even thought about asking the king about mother. Rod, you should watch your back, too. It's possible that the witch in question could be plotting something against the royal pa family as well. They, could, they have been in the palace for a long time after all. She looks at me, then Rod, her expression somber. I won't be able to stay with you anymore. I had to pick up and leave a few days ago because I was certain he caught a trace of my magic. He probably already has. I had his dad. Anyway, you said it's right to return to the palace now. Someone may notice your absence if you're gone much longer. You two should leave now. Let us know if you notice anything unusual. I will. We'll see you again soon, princess. Remember, stay vigilant. That was a lot of information to take in, in one night. Within like 30 minutes. Wow! I... I, sh I guess I should have expected that one. That the Quinn was a witch. Um, or at least the uh, TV bear. Anyways, uh, Rod and I leave the Martian in silence. And here in the secret tunnels, we are suffocated under even more silence, but still neither of us makes an effort to speak. I mean, like, yeah, I think anyone would be speechless at this point. I'm still stuck uh, inside my mo own mind, sifting through the troubled thoughts. I cannot reconcile the fact that the wicked witch who met the witches during the war was my mother. I did not even realize how many people hated my mother until after she had passed and they spoke about how cruel a queen she was. I never understood why since she always she has always been the perfect per person in my eyes. I never connected my mother with TB Bear, but what Parfait and Delora just told me makes sense. Was I uh sorry. Was I living a lie all those years? A lie that my mother crafted so that I remained cold and bitter, even after she passed away? 
and Delora and Parfait say I am meant to inherit the power of TB from my mother. I do not want that burden. I must bump into Rod's back until when he suddenly walk stops walking. He turns around and looks at me with a serious expression. I cannot- oh wait, is, is, that, is that him talking? <laughs> I cannot help but feel ju- oh wait, no no no. I cannot help but feel judged beneath the weight of his gaze. If you were gonna tell me that you never wanted me as a partner because my mother was a witch, then... I would go and say that. What? I won't lie. The first time I saw you, I thought you were just like your brother. You were cold, harsh, selfish. I never wanted to have anything to do with you. That was why I was so against this partnership, but... You've changed. Oh, he's smiling for the first time. Open your eyes, please. Rod's expression softens. Damn it! I wanted him to smile and open his eyes at the same time. Oh, well, maybe next time. Still waiting for it. And you and Ab have grown closer. I have seen that you are not like your mother. She speaks folly of you. Oh my god! It's that well! Screenshot! Yeah! Actually, you know what? I'm gonna save it. Yeah! Uh, she speaks badly of you, and I can tell she really enjoys your company. That's why. Even if I do have uh, even if I do not have plans to break my curse, I will still do what I can to help you break yours. It's the least I can do as a partner. I stare at Rod in shock. This is the first time he has ever been so nice to me. What? He's been nice all the time, he just he was just soon there. I think that's the term to use. Uh why are you staring at me like that? I'm only doing this because you're important to my sister. Oh, he's blushing! Rod turns away. His face beat red. Liar. Wait, wait, wait. Liar. Rod reaches up. Uh, Rod reaches up to pinch Sebi's face. Ow! Compliment him or thank him? Rod turns away, his cheeks dusted pink. It's no big deal. I'm only doing this because I see how dedicated you are to breaking your curse. Because I want to get my old life back. And now that they have told me about Mother, I want to prove I am nothing like her. Anyway, I still want to help you break with... Uh, I still want to help you with your curse, Rod. Why do you refuse to break it? Rod stares down at his feet, expression melancholy. Uh, because I cannot. Rod stops and shakes his head. He says nothing else and I do not probe him anymore, especially not after seeing the distant look on his face. We walk through the corridor and back to our rooms after we say our goodbyes. Uh, I wonder what Rod was going to say. Yeah, me too! Sebi, this is where- Oh, shit. Mother, look! Eleanor got me this gift! Eleanor? She's my maid and my friend! Princesses don't make friends with their servants. But she's really nice. She even bought me how to braid my hair like- Those servants are only nice to you because you are the princess. The only pretend to be your friend so that they can have power over you. But Eleanor would never. What reason do I have to lie to you? I. When have I ever lied to you, little one? You have never lied to me. That is correct. Tomorrow, I will remedy the situation. I will hire a new maid. Oh shit. You're not to befriend this one, no matter what she says. But mother... 
Are you arguing with me, Lucette? No, no, I, I'm sorry, mother. Oh. It's a scarred. It's a scarred childhood there. Oof. It's like an overbearing, overprotective parent almost. Almost. Not on the same level, definitely, but eh, it's like a step down from it. It's been days since Parfait and Delora revealed my mother's true identity and the inevitable responsibility I am to have on my shoulders once I turn 18. I've been trying to ask the king about mother, but he is even busier these days than he was before and it's impossible to find a single moment in the day to speak with him. The fact that I'm a maid makes it even harder to garner his attention. I figured. When I am not on break, I continue to do my duty serving Emmeline. Right now, I am accompanying her as she practices her walk and posture. Oof. Ophelia has been helping her, pointing out any mistakes she finds. I know how hard this is, dear. I had to go through this training as well before I married the king. Emmeline allows her shoulders to slouch as she lets out an exasperated sigh. Hated these lessons. Wait, did I give her a regular? I've always hated these lessons. I thought my posture was fine. Then this is supposedly to refine it. And yet, all these lessons have been doing my. All these lessons have been doing is hurting my back. Yep. Correct posture for those uh, who are doing uh, mainly computer jobs, like data. Typing and stuff, data entry, uh, receptionists, gotta, gotta posture up. And as I say that, I realize I've been slouching this entire time. Oh boy. Okay, yep. Posture up, posture up, yep. Oh, I'm lame. You'll get the hang of this. You just need to keep practicing. Practice does make perfect. But mother... I've had the same lesson before. Why must I do it again? Because you slouch when you walk, that is unbecoming of a princess. Emmeline scowls at her mother, and Ophelia frowns. Ophelia's frown falls away as she bursts into laughter. Mother, you're not helping. The atmosphere in the room is far from heavy as Emmeline and her mother continue to conduct their lessons. It is almost the exact opposite lessons I had with mother. Mother always got angry when I made even the smallest mistakes. I know this is hard, but as the crown princess, all eyes will be on you during the ball. The people there will judge any small mistake you make, which is why you need to be in top form that night. I know. Ophelia claps her hands. Alright, now to start again. Emmeline groans before heading to the far wall and straightening her back. She takes a deep breath, puts a book on her head, and begins to walk again. Oh god, she's doing that training? Uh, I've actually tried that. Um, balancing something on your head and walking up straight. Uh, it was for drama class, I think. No, not drama class. It was uh, acting class. Um, Buck falls from her head on her third step. She sides move back, starts the process again. Neither of us break Emmeline's concentration by speaking. We stand idly by and watch as she tries time and time again. I'm surprised when Ophelia leans toward me and begins to whisper. Lucette, I've been meaning to say this before, but I'm grateful to you that you are friends with my daughter. I look at Ophelia's smiling face with surprise. I, uh, never agreed to be her friend. You are not against the princess making friends with her servants. Why would I be? I actually wish more of the staff would be here wouldn't be so uptight, since I would love Emmeline to be on good terms with the people who serve her. Hell yeah, be a leader, not a boss. Uh, besides, social status is never an obstacle to friendship. Hell yeah! She gets it. 
Ophelia shifts her gaze back to Emmeline, who is now picking up the book that has once fallen from her head. No matter what, no matter your occupation or status, a friend is always a friend. Yeah! I love this person. I'm glad, sir, I'm glad I gave her a normal voice. Alright. Because at first, I thought she was suspicious, uh, just as Lucette said. But everything was at reverse. Lucette was, uh. Uh. A, a bad person. Is what I'll say. And, uh. The, uh. Ophelia, Emmeline, and Rod were all nice, nice people. Nice people! Uh, you've given Emmeline the courage she needs to face the many challenges she has ahead of her. In a way, you're like family, since you're always around us. Like family. Come what may, both family and friends are there for you and will accept you for who you are. Even before I was cursed, Emmeline was always trying to be my friend. That means she knew all along who my mother was and still wanted to be my friend. Oh shit, that's right. That... That takes courage. The thought makes me remember what Parfait told me about mother threatening to kill Ophelia if the king did not marry her. I turned to Ophelia, curious. Your Majesty, may I ask you know about the great queen's rule? Ophelia looks at me quizzically, so I quickly add a thoughtless lie. I was not an angel and have only heard th stories. I just thought it was it's so hard to believe. Look, look how peaceful things are in the palace right now. Oh shit. There's the ominous music. Uh, the kingdom was a dark place back then. People lived in fear under her rule. The king had no power, no real power over Angio. The witches had free reign over the kingdom. They cast the fairy tale curse incessantly and on the wind. We barely left our houses in fear of being cursed. Mother's reign was that terrible. The king still blames himself for the darkness that befell Angio during that time. This is why he works day in and day in and day out to stabilize the country and to put smiles on everyone's faces. I remember long ago how he told me one of the reasons he would always continue to work hard for this kingdom was because he wanted to make a brighter tomorrow for his child. Children. Um... There we go. Ophelia looks confused for a few moments, then brushes off the awkwardness with a small chuckle. Oh, this is a tough curse break. I thought... I thought she'd just realize why she said that. He helps the family in his own way. Is it possible he sat down with me in mind? And Ophelia slip up. Oh, I'm glad she picked up on that. Kingdom's come a long way since then, hasn't it? There are still witches here and there, but most of them don't bother others. I pray that the peace we are experiencing right now will last. I see. Thank you for telling me. It is a bit of a dreary topic, but I'm happy to have helped. If you need anything else, please don't hesitate to call on me. I know it may not be a traditional protocol for a queen, but then I do not consider myself a typical queen. I try my best to listen to everyone here, regardless of what their title or name might be. That's a good queen. I can only not better response. In response, Princess or Maid, the way Ophelia has treated me has never changed. She has always treated me with kindness, regardless of who I am never saw it before because I was always so distant with everyone, but now I see that Ophelia treats everyone here with kindness regardless of social status. I was always so frustrated by the servants when they compared Ophelia to mother, saying she was superior, but now I think 
I understand why they would make such a person. Emmeline dismisses me after my lessons, and I begin to head immediately back to my room. I'm just... Uh, I've just turned the corner when I notice Sir Alcaster standing before me, scowling. Watch where you're going, child. I quickly avert my gaze, not wanting a confrontation. He always looks at me so strangely, almost like he can see through my mind. Or is trying to? My apologies, Sir Alcaster. Sir Alcaster nods his head at me stiffly before walking off. You are- Whoa! See the witch? Um... You are pardoned, princess. I turn to stare after him, but he has already turned the corner. My blood becomes cold. Just the slip of the tongue. No! Hell no! Why would he say that to a maid? But how else could he know that I'm a princess? Is it possible he is cursed? No. Something, somehow, that does not seem right. But if he does not have a fairy tale curse, could he be the witch that the Lord warned me about? What reason would he have for unveiling his identity then? Unless he just wants to intimidate me further. It occurs to me that Fritz still remembers who I am. Did he tell his father? Oh wait, it's his father? What? No, that can't be right. Why would he tell... I guess, I guess he would tell him, but then that still wouldn't add up. Because she wanted it to be a secret. I'm so confused. I mean, he's Alcaster has always been suspicious, and so is the royal advisor. Mithros is his name, I think. Did he tell his father about me? Now I am even more confused about whom I should trust. Do that. I jump when I hear Rod call me. His expression slowly creases with something that looks like worry. You're pale. Did something happen? Oh, I should definitely tell him. Would he believe me if I told him? Sir Elkester knows that I'm a princess. Do you think he is the witch Delora was talking about? Oh, shit. I whisper the words to him and he responds by raising his eyebrows looking surprised. What makes you say that? This isn't just because of the standoffish way he asks, is it? You don't believe me. Rod sighs. I never said I did it. It's just that we can't just let me accuse someone, or anyone, without real proof. Rod stares at me for a few moments, then closes his eyes, his eyebrows slightly furled with thought. Sir Fitzgerald also remembers who you are. I mean... Yeah, that's true. Be so suspicious of Fritz, but I don't think blindly trusting him would be right either given these circumstances. You need to stay vigilant around him. If anything happens, you could talk to me about it. You're worried about me? Rod averts his gaze from me. Whoa! You have made the right choice. The crystal in the upper right corner indicates you have made the right choice. For per particular love interest. Each color corresponds to a certain love interest. They're, they also appear belatedly after you make a choice, so keep your eyes and ears open. Oh, oh why did this show up now? Because I think my first choice was a long time ago. Anyways, cool. That means I've made the right choice every time, I believe. I'll have to look back on the videos. Of course I am. Wow, you're actually being honest. Uh... What? Rod glares at Sebi before pinching his cheek. Anyways, I must leave now. I have a dance to practice for. Dance? But you already know how to dance. 
What do you have left to practice? Roz, Rod does not answer and only walks away. I decide to follow after him. Why did you follow me? <laughs> I shrug. I wanted to see you practice. To be honest, I want to see him dance. I already know that Emmeline is very clumsy when it comes to dancing, but outside of the one practice with Emmeline, I've never seen Rod dance. Emmeline always gloats on his behalf, but I've yet to witness Rod's supposed talent with my own eyes. Our dance together was short, so I uh, barely had any time to judge him. I do that practice with an audience. Why? It's a uh, pipe reference. Rod is, e Rod is easily embarrassed. Rod groans and pinches one of Sebi's cheeks, glowering. Sorry! Rod reluctantly. Uh, huh, that's a tough word. Uh, Rod reluctantly releases the bunny with a sigh. I uh, notice you have been talking more lately, Sebi. Oh, that's because Rod here has been saying that things that contradicts what he thinks or feels. Sevi makes a sound of defeat as Rod once again pinches one of his cheeks. Uh -huh. Rod stares at me with wide eyes and I stare back, beginning to panic. Uh, what's wrong? You smiled again. I put a hand to my mouth, flushing. Uh... I was smiling, and I never even noticed. It was a pretty smile, princess. Right, Rod? Rod quickly turns away, cheeks slightly pink. I did practice now, so I would appreciate you leaving. He did not even command me to leave. What a surprise. Emily said you were a really good dancer. I want to see it with my own eyes. So... Why? So you can judge me? Sure, I'm a better dancer than you, though. No, that's a. That's not a good answer. Actually, that's more of a challenge, isn't it? Let me save it. Uh, let's save it to this one. Yes. Let's challenge him. Oh, shit. I guess that was the wrong answer. The scowl on Rod's face deepens. I almost smirk. Uh, maybe... Uh, maybe he is re reluctant to, to show me, but Rod is also full of pride. He is more likely to show me if I pose a challenge. You didn't even answer the question. And... Are you underestimating my dancing? The others may have forgotten, but you still remember, do you not? I am a princess, and I was taught by the kingdom's best instructor. I say the words with pride, and I notice Rod's lips twitch in response. It actually makes me feel accomplished to get under Rod's skin, when he is usually the one getting under mine. Having the best instructor does not automatically make you the best dancer. I'm pretty confident with my own skills. Say what you want, but I will refuse to believe you without any proof. I still say I'm a better dancer than you are. Oh, that was the right answer! Look at that! Awesome. Rod steps forward, pulls me suddenly into his arms, taking me by surprise. He looks at me, clearly determined. Oh shit, close up. Fine, Dad. You'll have your proof. I'll make you swallow those words with this dance. We shall see. Rod starts leading the dance. He glides us into the imaginary rhythm of a waltz. Even without music, I am able to count the steps in my head as I follow his lead. This is different from the short dance we showed Emily. Rod's movements are graceful. His touch gentle as he leads me to an underarm twirl. Whoa! When I've come to face him once again, I notice the gentle way he stares at me. The usual hardness of his expression is gone, melted into something more relaxed. I 
find myself staring back at him, looking into his eyes. Perhaps Rod does have some gentleness to him. Our gaze does not break as he twirls me. Ooh, it's getting hot in here! You have beautiful eyes. <laughs> Damn it. That's the only downside of giving him this voice. Rod's eyes widen as soon as mine do. He abruptly lets go of my hands and steps back. I can only stare at him, my face warm. It wasn't me this time! That was more than just a thought, I swear! Dot dot dot. Rod says nothing, though his cheeks continue to darken with embarrassment. Ooh, uh, oh my. Rod and I turn to Emmeline, who is hovering by the door. Oh shit! Uh, excuse me? Rod quickly walks away through the doorway and out into the hallway, leaving Emmeline and I alone in the room. What just happened? That was a wonderful dance, Lisette. You were watching? How long? Oh, I only just saw the last few minutes. But you know, the two of you really did look like a couple. It was sweet. Uh, a couple? Oh, you're blushing. I put a hand to my cheek and turn away with a scowl. I am not. Besi uh, besides, whatever just happened was just embarrassing. Do you like Rod? I stare at her. I do not. Also, you are forgetting that I am a maid who could not be with the princess even if I wanted to. Oh, I wouldn't say that. He is grumpy and cold. <laughs> oh, come on, Lisette. And even though we are not blood related, he is still my stepbrother. If Emmeline realized how crazy her wor crazy her words were in light of this truth. Emmeline suddenly looks starry-eyed as she giggles at me. Love's, love knows no boundaries, dear Lucette. Besides, he seems to like you. Your brother hates me. <laughs> Rod can be a contradiction sometimes. Sometimes he says the opposite of what he feels. It's only when you're when you get to know him as well as I do, that you realize that what his truths are. I cannot help think of Sebi who is always speaking Rod's thoughts aloud when they are contradictory. He always seemed so mean to Viorica when we were young. He would always bully her for being a crybaby even though he cried far more often. But then I realized he treated her more special than he did anyone else. Back then, I knew that he liked her. I thought that one day the two of them might even grow to love each other, but... Emmeline lets out a long sigh as he, she directs her attention out the window. His attitude towards her has changed ever since she, he was cursed. Then they grew even more distant when Viorica found a lover. Is that the reason why you have been going to the toy shop with Prince Rod? Because you want to bring them back together? Uh, that seems like a bad idea since Viorica already found someone. Emily nods. The three of us were best friends. The three musketeers. It's not the same without Rod. Keep on asking him what's wrong, but he refuses to tell me. He's always been stubborn, but it's not like him to keep secrets. It's really frustrating because I have no idea what I should do to help him. Yeah, it's tough when someone wants to keep secrets forever. I thought he was just being stubborn with me, but apparently no amount of prodding even from his own family would make him budge. Why is it being so difficult? I hope you do not mind me asking you. Well, what do you know about his curse? Emily stares at me for a few moments before nodding. You're my friend, Lucette, and I know that I can confide in you. <gasps> oh! She trusts me! Yay! I know that sometimes 
confidence. I'm not trusting enough, but I think Emlyn is still far too trusting. Yeah, maybe. That, that could definitely become a fault. We only know that he has the mermaid's curse. I've read these stories so many times, hoping that I can figure out some way to break his curse. I think back and realized I'd actually read the beginning of The Little Mermaid a long time ago. I did not have the chance to finish it because I was caught by mother. The Little Mermaid is about a mermaid who trades her voice for legs, right? Wait, what? It can't be a literal curse, like... Yes, she does it so she could be with her prince. Rod's voice was taken away, but I'm sure he was given something in exchange. I've heard that the curses were derived from original tales, but they are twisted in some way to fit the format of the curse. Oh, okay, so not literal. Woo! I was gonna think he's gonna lose his legs and turn into a merman? Uh, that'd be kinda weird. I nod slowly, thoughtful. I have a strong feeling that Rod's curse is related to Viorca, but I cannot draw the connection. But still, Viorca might be the key to understanding this curse. If Rod would not divulge anything, the next best chance we have of understanding this curse might be going through for Viorca. Detective Lucette is on the case. Be careful of what you wish for. Uh oh. Uh, today is the first time I'm leaving the palace on a day off. Usually, I choose to stay inside. Whereas the other servants always leave to go home. I never see any reason to leave since this has always been my home. And the Martian has never been home. Besides, it is not as if I want to return. Not after that conversation we all shared last time. Wait, what conversation? Uh, thus, I've spent most of my days asking questions about Mother's reign, inquiring when and where I can. The opinions do not surprise me. I was so scared of her. One wrong move, and she'd have you thrown in prison. The townsfolk would always wait for her to pass by before leaving their houses. She was a tyrant. The kingdom is a better place now that she's gone. There's no reason for them to lie to me. The more I hear, the more my old life makes sense to me. I now know why the king has never seemed to love Mother, and why the people hated her. And the reason people looked at me with such fear. Yeah, it all fits together, actually. However, it has been months since I have been glared at in public. There is good, one good thing about this curse did to me, and it is that it allows me to travel around town without being noticed. As Viorca's shop comes into view, my thoughts shift to the reason I have left the palace in the first place. If Rod will not tell me any- Let me try that one more time! If Rod will not tell me anything, I will have to ask Viorca. She must be related in some way to really- uh, some way to his curse. I pause outside the door to the toy shop. With a deep breath, I push the door open. I don't think Viorca knows us. Welcome! The moment she sees me, her expression becomes confused. Oh, you're the uh, princess maid, Lucette, wasn't it? I nod at her. You've never come in alone before. What can I do to help you with? I uh, wanted to ask you something. It's about P Prince Rod. Prince Rod? Uh, did something happen to him? Is he okay? He's fine. She sighs with relief. Uh, then what is it you'd like to ask? I just wanted to know if you knew anything about Prince Rod's sudden muteness. Uh, Fiorca stares at me for a few moments before she shakes her head. I only know that it happened soon after I met my fiancé this month. What reason do you have me for asking? Well... I 
trying to think of a plausible explanation for this, and I immediately consider Emmeline. The Erica is Emmeline's best friend. She Surely she would be willing to help if she knew I was doing this for Emmeline. I don't know if that's a good idea. I don't know why I just saying that one. <laughs> Prince Rod has been very quiet recently. Don't lie to her. Prince em Princess Emmeline has been worried sick about him. But he refuses to say anything, even to her. I've been trying to gather information that might be helpful in discerning the cause. Dot dot dot. I stare at her expectantly, hoping that my gaze holds nothing but determination. <laughs> Finally, Fiorica smiles. She's lucky to have a de dedicated friend like you. I'm still not accustomed to the fact that Emily consider considers me a friend. Before she became princess, I was her first confidant. We were like sisters. Now that she's living in the uh, but now that she's living in the castle, we no longer have the luxury of spending so much time together. I worry about her constantly. Even around me, Em always tended to keep her problems to herself at first. She doesn't like to bother other people with them. It is hard not to agree. With the way M. Malene was always smiling before, I never thought she had any problems in her life. It was only recently that we discovered that she was hiding all her loneliness as pain behind a smile. That's what most people do, I think. Especially through like social media. Um, yeah, I was just thinking, sorry. Uh, it's a relief that she's befriended someone who cares so much about her. I don't know if it could be much help, but I'll tell you what I know if it will help Emmeline. To start with, I'm not exactly sure how everything changed, but it all happened so suddenly. All I know is that after the night I met Desimond, our relationship changed. At first, he still smiled, but recently he's been avoiding me. What happened between the two of you the night you met your fiancé? Nothing. Rod and I did not meet on that day. Rod wasn't there? No, but soon after what happened that night, uh, Rod grew distant. What happened? Oh, did Desimon like confront Prince Rod maybe? Or is Desimon a witch maybe? I don't know. Of course it was a stormy night. It was a dark and stormy night and I was heading back home. I took the route by the riverbank because it was the shortest route. It was foolish of me. The road was simple, slippery and full of mud. I lost my footing and fell into the water. The waves were strong and I was certain I was going to drown. I don't remember what happened in the darkness of that water. Only when I woke up, my head was in Desmond's lap. It was the first time we met, but not the last. He carried me home, and he came every day as I was recovering. And then he came to visit even after I recovered. I tried not to get my hopes up too much, because what could this nobleman see in me a mere commoner? But I still ended up falling in love with him. You have no idea how happy I was when he said he loved me too. It was a dream come true. Of course, every girl dreams of marrying a prince. It was in all of these fairy tales I read as a child. None of that is related to him. How does this relate to his curse? You said your relationship with Prince Rod changed after that night. What happened? Yorka sighs. I told Em and Rod about Desmond soon after the incident. Em was happy that the two of us had fallen in love, but Rod... Rod didn't say much of anything. Wait, is Yorka just completely oblivious about Rod's feelings? Or maybe she knew about the feelings before the curse? And... 
I don't know. Sort of still mixed up. Okay. That's when I noticed he started growing distant, and when I realized uh, that he had also lost his voice. He still won't tell me anything, but I figured that he was. Her voice fades, but I know she is referring to the curse. So what? <laughs> I just, I just mixed up her word rod and lost, and I got lost. So Rod lost his voice shortly after Fjorga met Desperate. The mermaid's curse must have something to do with the tail. The, li the little mermaid traded her voice for legs, so that she could be with her prince. But that night, the only person who found their prince charming was Fjorga. Rod's curse must have something to do with and Fjorga. They can distance with her after finding about this mount. Why? Then there is the fact that she still spoke to Fjorga, even if she was distant. It was only he found out about their wedding that he became so cold. I frowned as I tried to organize my thoughts. Same with me. I'm trying hard right now to figure this out. How did it become this late? I'm sorry, Lucette, but I have to close the show shop now. Sorry for the story, I know it has nothing to do with Rod, but it was after that incident that he began to act strangely. I don't think I was much help, but I shake my head. You have told me what you could. Bjorka walks me to the store, opening it so that the both of us can step out onto the street together. It's weird, did they not illustrate the, uh, this Desimon? I feel like he's a major part of this curse. I really hope that you're able to help Emmeline and Rod. I hope so too. Did you see Ophelia the other day? I catch sight of two noblewomen sitting on a bench together not too far away from the toy shop. They are referring to Ophelia without her title. How disrespectful. Who would have thought a peasant like her could almost look like royalty but her dress as a queen she ought to be wearing silks rather than satin i don't know why but i bristle at their comments everyone is entitled to their opinion but the fact that they are speaking so bluntly in public means they have little worry of being overheard i am still not sure what the king saw in her oh they jealous well, you know, what they say about ladies lacking natural beauty. Her talents must lie in other, more persuasive areas. Wow. She must be very persuasive. She must be very persuasive indeed if the king saw it worthwhile to marry her. You, 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 uh, you're a bad people. As the two women laugh, I feel something hot begin to burn inside my stomach. Yorika takes in a sharp breath beside me. Since I am a maid in the palace, Ophelia has nothing but been kind to me, a mere servant. She has all the right to flaunt her status and title, yet she reminds her more. I now know that this is why everyone at the palace loves her. True that. Common women like her can only keep a man's attention for so long. I started walking towards them without thinking. You said I, I wouldn't. You have no right to say those things about the queen. Oh shit. Uh, the two women are clearly surprised at my interruption. Both of them are glaring at me. And you have no right to eavesdrop on us. Eavesdropping? Anyone could have heard you. Their mouths fall open. One of the women looks to me for a long time. Their sneers suddenly, then sneers suddenly as if something had occurred to her. I thought you looked familiar. You're the crown princess's personal maid. I see you always following around when she's in town. This is no business of yours, girl. Why do you care so much for our opinions? 
Ah, perhaps because the girl idolizes the queen, thinks she might also go from rags to riches. What? Oh, you do have a point. They stand in advance towards me. Do you want the prince for yourself, girl? If a commoner can become the queen, it's not too difficult to imagine yourself as a princess, yes? How foolish! You better off, uh, you're better off dreaming smaller dreams, girl. They laugh, and in an irritation in my chest blazes into full-on anger. Oh boy. Oh boy. Is this what Ophelia has been doing you for the past year? She has been treated so cruelly, and she has done nothing but love the king. And I also ridiculed her like this. I force myself to look at the cruel woman as I move my hand to the pendant hanging around my neck. I was just as cruel as them. I barely feel Fiorico's hand as she rests it against my shoulder. We said, let it go. Her Majesty wouldn't want you to do this. But I cannot just let these two women talk about Ophelia like this. I pull away from Fiorica and stand firm. The Queen has a good heart. She is far more noble than either of you could ever hope to be. Damn! I think back on the times I was cruel to her. Ophelia could have easily reprimanded me for my behavior. She had the right as my stepmother, yet she has been nothing but kind to me. Ophelia never got angry at me, even despite my treatment towards her and her family. She's always treated others with kindness, even when they are cruel to her. Judging by the bitter bitterness of your accusations, Seems like you were just jealous of her. How pathetic. Damn! Pew, 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 pew! The other woman marches towards me, and my free hand instinctively moves to hold her hand just before her palm reaches my cheek. Oh, Ninja Lucette! I will not tolerate any insults towards the queen. A soft light emanates from the pendant, and I can only stare at it in shock. I got another good deed by defending Ophelia. The woman snatches her hand away. How dare a peasant like you talk that way to us? Have you no manners? I could ask you the same. What happened to yours? How dare you! Don't you know who we are? Uh, don't you know who we are, girl? I will. S uh, I will see you pay for your impertinence. Our words have far more weight than yours will ever will. I will go to the king myself to tell him about how rude you were. Uh, who is this? I can pass. I don't guess it's Rob. I could pass on that message by self. Oh, that was right! Hell yeah! Hell yeah! <laughs> I don't know why I'm getting so excited. This game, this is fun. This is fun. Um, I turn and see Rod walking toward us, his expression cold. The two normal noblemen hastily curtsy. Your, your highness. The noblemen turn pale as Rod's eyes fall on them. Actually, we have an important dinner engagement. Uh, yes! Yes, we do! Run away! Uh, the two noble women curtsy before quickly departing. What are you doing here without your guards? You... What trouble have you gotten yourself into now? Um... No, I think Lucette handled herself well here. Oh, and then he'd be super suspicious about why we were here this late. 
So I'm gonna say. So tell him I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say don't tell. It's nothing. If you refuse to tell me what happened, I will have to assume that the double with you are telling the truth about you. Oh shit. Um. Oh shit! You are caught to the rescue! Lucette has done nothing wrong. In fact, I think Lucette only did what you or Emmeline would have done had you heard the awful things those women were saying about your mother. But. She stood up for the queen when she didn't have to. Hell yeah, Viorka! Hell yeah! Then, why did you just say so? Would you have believed me? Dot dot dot. Rod drops his gaze from mine. Oh shit, he wouldn't! You never gave me the chance to believe you, did you? Oh, that's true. He would have believed me. How am I to know that? Rod is like a walking <laughs> contradiction. Uh, Rod glances up again, this time to look at Viorica. We should keep you from returning home, Viorica. I'll take Lucette back to the palace. Viorica's eyes narrow and she looks ready to say something, but Rod has already reached out for my hand to pull me along behind him. No! Avoiding the problem is bad! Fell faster in you, like a growing wound. That's cheesy, but it's true. If you just keep, keep, if you keep secrets a secret forever, and never confess your feelings, I think it'll just, it's like a poison. You should just, you should just come out with your feelings. Tell the person you really like them and uh, ask him out for a date. If he's taken. Um, just like pass along. He's like, okay, well, I hope you have a good life. And maybe we could be friends or maybe just end the relationship altogether. But that's just me. Um, like, I've been t turned down hundreds, not probably not hundred, tens of times. Um, and uh, yeah, I know the feeling of rejection. It's not a good feeling, but at least you know at that point. Anyways, back to the story. Uh, when we are out of sight of Yorka's shop, Rod stops, releasing my hand as he turns to face me. Did you really think I would refuse to believe you if you told me the truth? You never like me. You have no reason to believe me. Rod sighs, running a hand through his hair. I told you I would help you break your curse, right? That offers alone should be enough for you to know that I... Rod turns away, sound like looking embarrassed. Sabi? That I don't dislike you anymore. Oh, the right choice! Yes! Oh. You're expecting me just to assume that? How would I know unless you made that absolutely clear? Well, now you did. Well, I'm making it clear now. I understand. Anyway, thank you for standing up for my mother. It seems like you don't require my assistance in breaking your curse after all. He gestures to my necklace. Congratulations on your second good deed, Lucette. Oh, that smile could melt the ice from any heart. Suddenly, tongue-tied, I find myself looking everywhere but at Rod. When I have once again gathered my senses, I turn to the road. My eyes narrow as I recognize the path we are on. This is not the way back to the palace. No, it isn't. We're going to the Martian. Why? Because I was on my way there before I was forced to take a detour because someone was drawing attention to herself. What? But Rod ignores me and we walk the rest of the way to the Martian in silence. Awkward, awkward silence. Waltz is the only person in the reception room when we enter. Prince Rod? Princess? It's a little late for you two to be here. I had meant to be here earlier. Is Lady Parfait here? Waltz nods. Every time I see the word Parfait, 
I want a parfait. Parfait is... Hold on, let me... Parfait. Yes. A dessert consisting of layers of ice cream, fruit, etc. Served in a tall glass with occasional yogurt. Oh my god, I want a parfait so bad. These were available in college. In my college years. And now I gotta make my own. <sighs> These look so good right now. I should buy some yogurt. Anyways. <laughs> Waltz nods. I'll go get her. Wait here. As soon as Waltz leaves us alone, Rod turns to me. His ex expression rigid. Rod steps closer, grabs my shoulders, and kisses me! What? I wasn't able to say so earlier because we were out in public, but you should know just how much danger you're in now. And yet, you thought it was okay to go on your own? It was my day off today. Is it not unreasonable? Oh, wait. It is not unreasonable for me to want time for myself. Time for yourself? Don't you understand the meaning of being careful? Why would you do something as foolish as going out into town alone? I cannot help but bristle at his tone. Why are you so angry? Because you're... Rod trails off and looks away. Sebi? Because you're family. So you're finally acknowledge me as family. I notice his cheeks turning red. To be honest, you're less of a family, Ivor. Just important. Important? Because of all you do for Evelade, you're important to my sister. Is that all? Is that really all? Come on, man. He looks uncomfortable as he says the words, but I cannot help but marvel as an embarrassment. Why is he so embarrassed? But Rod changes the subject as he turns away from me. Why were you with Viorica? Oh shit. I can only think of one reason you speak to her. My curse. You thought you'd find about my curse through her? I shrug. I can only assume that your curse has something to do with Viorica. I look up when Rod says nothing, then stare at the curious sight of sight before me. Wait, what? He has taken Sebi off his shoulder and is holding the doll in his hands away from his face. Oh, the two seem to be engaged in some silent conversation, then gently Sebi speaks words I can hear. This is the right thing to do. You need to help. You have. You need to help. Let her help you, Rod. Mm hmm. Rod bites down on his lower lip before briefly closing his eyes. Eventually, he returns Sebi to his usual spot on his shoulder, and turns to me. <gasps> Fine. You're stubborn, and you're not going to quit investigating until I tell you, are you? You're right. Viorica is the reason I was cursed. She's the reason? That's not what I expected. Rod sits down on the settee, lets out a le heavy sigh. His eyes are far away as he speaks to me. I was in love with Viorica, but I wasn't brave enough to tell her. Well, got that one. I just followed her around like some kind of puppy. One day, Viorica hadn't come home and it was raining very heavily. So I went out to look for her. Oh shit! I think I know why. I think I just figured it out. Hold up. Is Viorka dead? And she was giving a se second life at chance? Or a second chance at life? And that's his curse? So if he relieves this curse, maybe she becomes dead again? I don't know. That's That's the only situation I can think of and, and that's the only situation where he doesn't want to break his curse. I found her walking along the bank of the river. I called out to her to tell her to be careful, but I don't think she ever heard me. She slipped dead. 
Rod swallows. He clutches one of his fists, uh, hands into a fist. He fell into the river. I dived in after her. I somehow managed to get both of us onto the river bank, but it didn't look like the article was breathing. I didn't know what to do. I started panicking. I ran off to try and find help, but I couldn't find anyone in the store. When I returned, she was gone. I rushed to her house, and the doctor was already there, tending to her all along with this amount. Ron's case is vacant as his thoughts. When Viorica began to fall in love with this month, I felt helpless. Did you not tell her that you were the one that saved her? Why would I? Viorica was so happy believing that she and this man would fade to be together. I couldn't do that to her. But surely if you told her... Rod interrupts me. I want the people I love to be happy. Yeah, that's probably the hardest thing is uh, when you see like a crush or someone you really like happy with another person, you just gotta leave them alone and uh, not pursue that love. I think I've been in that situation a couple times. Um, just sucks, you know. I don't care if their happiness caused me pain. I'd rather bear that pain alone instead of bringing down those around me. Good guy, Rod. My chest aches as I watch Rod's face. I never would have guessed Rod would be so selfless. And I didn't stop me from thinking that I could still make her love me instead. I decided to become what I thought Viorca wanted most, a prince charming of fairy tales she so adored. And so I wished a witch to turn me into one. She stole my voice in exchange. What? Only then did I realize she had inflicted the fairy tale curse upon me, the mermaid curse. The next day, the king turned up at our house, proclaiming that she'd been looking for my mother for years, and she would never stop loving her. Oh my god! So it's not completely tied to Viorca, it's also tied to... Wow! So what would happen? That would like ruin like two lives actually, or like... It would ruin... Oh my god, well... When the king buried my daughter, I became a prince. It's just that the witch promised. But, didn't matter. I didn't see it when I meant to deal with the witch, but I could be blind to it forever. Desimod and Viorica really do love each other. They make each other happy. Nothing I can do will ever change that. Rod, hi. Prince Rod? Oh, Parfait pauses in the tracks when she sees me. Have I uh, interrupted something? Duh. Rod moves over to Parfait, but he stops to glance back at me. I will be loved. Parfait looks at Rod and then at me, her face puzzled, but she does not say a word as Rod and her leave the room. That explains a lot in terms of his situation. So, what would happen if we broke his curse though? That's like the biggest puzzling answer. Would that... Would the king stop loving Ophelia? And then would Desimon like disappear and then Viorca's memories return and then fall in love with uh, Prince Rod? Then he'd be like ruining two lives at once. He'd be ruining Desimon's life and he'd be ruining 
uh, probably Emmeline and Ophelia's wife. Yeah, that's a tough one. What would you do in that situation? I, I think Rod being Cephalus is probably the best choice. Even if it does make him miserable. Um, and it's definitely the harder choice among the two. But he didn't explain any of the requirements to breaking his curse. Uh, I did not get. The, I think the actually, I think the only requirement is him saying or telling the truth to Fiorca. I think that would break the curse, maybe, or maybe him confessing his love to Fiorca. I don't know. Still, a lot of factors not really known right now. I did not get the chance to discuss Rod's curse with them later that night, nor did I get the chance to speak with Parfait and Delora about my suspicions of Sir Alcaster. Days go by, but I still find myself overwhelmed by preparations for the ball. Things have become more frantic every day, making it difficult for me to have any time to speak with anyone. Eventually, I decide to write a letter containing my suspicions of Sir Alcaster. That's not good. What if that letter gets intercepted? I tell Parfait and Delora that I believe that he might be the witch they are looking for. I also add that I believe Fritz might be somehow involved, though my suspicions are not well founded with him. To make matters worse, to make matters worse, he went and disappeared. I have not heard anyone mention his name here for a very long time. I'm forcefully pulled from my thoughts when I collide with someone. The lens I've been holding scatter over the floor. Oh shit. Excuse me, I did not. I look up and my trail and that voice trails off when I see who I bumped into. Lots in your lost in your thoughts. Sir Mithros looks at me. Something veiled in his smiling eyes. God that smile. Um I suppose those. Oh, oh, oh. I suppose they're the linens the Queen asked for. Yes, please excuse me. I begin gathering up the linens, but as soon as I reach for one, Sir Mithros picks it up first. Allow me to help you. I will be fine. But this was partially my fault. Let me assist you. I bite my lip, but do not protest as Sir Mithros helps me gather the rest of the linens. I am contemplating my schedule for the rest of the day, then I realize that Sir Mithros has been talking. I don't suppose you have any idea who that maid is? Maid? There is a cold amusement in Sir Mithros's gaze. What? Surely you've heard of the rumor of a young prince having been seen with a royal maid somewhere in town. Oh. Rumor has it that Prince Rod has been found love among the common folk, much like this royal stepfather has. Rod with a maid? As far as I, I'm aware, the only maid he's been sent out in town has been with me. Shit. I freeze at Sir Mithros straightens, patting down the clothes for dust before holding out for some, holding out some of the linens for me. If it is true, I wish him the best. Though I wish he would be more discreet about it. A royal scandal is the last thing we need to write about now. I shakily take the linens from Sir Mithros as he inclines his head to me. Good day, Lucette. I walk to the dining hall in the haze, my mind whirling with the implications of what Sir Mithros just said. I'm sure it was those noble women who spread this rumor. Maybe. Ah, Lucette, thank you for bringing these to me. Just leave them on the table. I curtsy after placing the linens down as commanded. If that is all, Lucette, 
I straighten at the tone of Ophelia's voice. When I look up, I see that her expression is carefully still. Uh-oh. I am about to ask you something that you might not want to answer, but I very much hope you will. I will answer if I can. Good. Ophelia sighs as she sits down on one of the dining table chairs and, I f and folds her hands on her lap. That's about Rog. Yep! I've been trying to ignore it since palace gossip is mostly fake, but I can't help my curiosity. I want to ask about your relationship with my son. I understand you and Rod were out together in town a few days ago. Do you want to tell me what happened? Uh, what, when it says explain the situation, does it mean... Ex mm, it's definitely not... I'm, I'm hoping the set doesn't tell anything about both of the curses. learning with these visual novels. I'm gonna explain the situation. Cause uh I think Ophelia would understand. If Ophelia is asking me about these rumors, I can only imagine what sort of stories those women would make up. Prince Rob was just on his way somewhere when he chanced upon me. When he saw that I was in trouble with two noble women, he stopped to free. That's all. Rod said the same thing. Uh, did, why did you ask me, your majesty? To see what you thought about the situation. I don't think anyone should get a say in what your relationship with Rod is. My relationship with Rod? I like you, Lucent, and I'm certain that you're good for Rod. If I had my way, I would let him court you. Yay! I feel heat in my cheeks as I trip over my words. The, the prince and I are not in a relationship. A member of the royal family cannot end up with a servant. Where there's love, there's hope. Social status shouldn't stop you from being happy, Lisette. Then, what about the fact that I am Rod's stepsister? <laughs> yeah, that might change it, maybe. I bite down on that statement fiercely. I already know what role I am playing here, and I cannot break it. Ophelia looks at me with a complicated expression before she sighs. I will not push you on this any further, but be careful. Your closeness with my son has not gone unnoticed. I do not believe in limiting relationships because of one's status, but... I understand. I curtsy as I move toward the dining hall entrance. What Ophelia mean by that closeness not going un... Wait, what did Ophelia mean by that closeness not going unnoticed? Ooh, her left eye is like... Vibrating? I don't think that's the right word. It's like shaking. Oof, let me blink. Close. And open. That's a little better. Later that day, as I am waiting outside the throne room for Emmeline to finish one of her classes, two maids walk toward me and stop in front of me. This isn't good music. Who said, isn't it? What is it? I've already finished all my tests for the day. Oh, I'm sure you have. Probably rushed through all of them so you can just hang around the prince and the princess tonight. The help, head the housekeeper, has been giving you a lighter load so you can afford the time to play around, hmm? I blink at them, confused. I have no idea what you're talking about. Don't play dumb. 
All the servants know what you've been doing. Just because you're em Princess Emmeline's personal maid doesn't mean you're the you make you better than us. I'd be careful not to get too big for your boots, Lisette. Whoa, even the maids, Jesus. Are you threatening me? What if we are? Rod. It's probably Rod. That I'd be very disappointed at you. Oh no, never mind. Pr Princess Emmeline. Emmeline moves to stand beside me, a disapproving expression on her face. I did not expect petty, petty cruelty from the two of you. You should be ashamed of yourselves. Your Highness. Oh shit! Wrong! Trouble twins into the rescue. You really do have a talent for getting yourself into trouble. Rod! Rod pauses briefly, his eyes meeting mine for a second before he looks at the maids. Don't you have better things to do than to bully my sister's maid? We apologize, your highness. We'll be on our way. Two maids run off. Emily looks to turn at me. Are you okay? I'm about to answer when I notice Rod is abruptly walking away from us. I frown at his back. He had only just started being nice to me and now he's back to acting as if I do not exist. What did I do? Emily puts her hands on my back and gently pushes me forward. You wanted to ask him about something, right? I could see it in your eyes. Emily smiles as she pushes the door to the throne room open. I have a few more answer uh, I have a few more questions to ask my teacher. I'll be a while. But But she disappears into the throne room before I can finish. I glance down the hallway, Rod has just disappeared down, and then back at the throne room. My thoughts whirl together in a vague mess until I make my decision. Wait! At the sound of my approaching footsteps, Rod turns and looks at me. He scowls but says, does not say anything. Oh man. the right answer here. I think it's to say nothing. Because I don't think he wants to be scolded right now. He did back us up. I want to say thank you, but that's not an option here. Um, say nothing. I feel abruptly tongue-tied when I come to face to face with him. It is likely that my telling off will result in some sort of altercation, and that would not be good. But I have better things to do than be gaped at. Rod turns away from me. I am left to stare dumbly after him. What is wrong with him? Normally he is not so afraid to speak his mind. I frown as if as I feel a dull ache throbbing deep within my chest. What's this? Why do I feel sad? Normally, Rod's distance does not make me feel this way. And yet now, am I really so sad that he does not want to speak with me? I shake my head, take a deep breath to steal my mind. It's better not to think about it. Oh no! Did I choose cor incorrectly? Hold up. I'm curious what the other option is. Yes. I'm pretty sure telling him off is the wrong answer. I'm really curious though. The words spill out before me before I can even think on them. What have I done now to make you angry with me? Nothing. He turns away and I glare as I follow closely behind them. You expect me to believe that? 
Then at least look at me when I'm talking to you. I reach out a hand to his elbow, pull him back so that he is facing me. Rod! But the words die in my throat when I see the expression on his face. Oh, that's why! Oh, he's so cute! His face is red and he refuses to look me in the eye. Oh, so that was the right answer. Well, shit. My surprise causes him, me to release him. Rod quickly turns around and begins to walk away. I am left to stare dumbly after him. What is wrong with him? Normally he's not afraid to speak his mind. I frown as I, f I feel a dull ache throbbing s somewhere deep in my chest. This is what you feel sad. This is... And you know, I feel sad. I shake my head and take a deep breath to steal my mind. Oh, so I guess... Huh. The ball! Look, I'm just gonna go with this one. I admit, I did make a mistake, but... Yeah. I'm gonna go with the best options. It is the day of the ball, and I am waiting for Emmeline to finish her last dance rehearsal. The day... Uh, the lesson was over an hour ago, but Emmeline remains here to continue practicing the steps. Meanwhile, I am preoccupied with the thoughts of Rod's curse. I cannot believe that Rod traded his voice for a title. So the reason King was able to find Ophelia was because of Rod. It's a little difficult to wrap my head around the implications, but one thing bothers me. Rod told me, told me why he has the curse, but gave no explanation as to how to break it. Where did it go in the original fairy tale? Emily finishes up the last steps of her routine. Before walking over to me, I hand her the glass of water I was holding for her. Thank you, Lisette. Emily must notice my curiosity because she stops to look at me quizzically. Is something the matter? I, I read a little bit of this fairy tale but never finished it. Can you tell me the whole story of the Little Mermaid? The Little Mermaid? Emily takes a seat on one of the chairs bordering the throne room and gestures for me to take the op one opposite to her. Telling a fairy tale is always a good way to wind down. Once upon a time, there was a mermaid that fell in love with a handsome prince. One day, she swam to the surface of the ocean to find them. She saw that the prince was celebrating his birthday on the grandest ship in the kingdom. The little mermaid was captivated by a human party and stayed to watch. And suddenly, a violent storm hit, and the prince was thrown from the ship into the ocean. The little mermaid saved the prince and took him safely to shore, but she could not stay long. She eventually had to return to the ocean and leave him on land. This is similar to Viorca's rescue. The little mermaid was so in love with the prince that she went to a witch who offered to trade her a potion that would turn her mermaid's tail into legs. They struck a deal. The mermaid would strike, uh, sacrifice her beautiful voice for legs so that she could live with the birds on land. So in Rod's case, he traded away his voice to become a prince. However, the sea witch gave the little mermaid a warning and said that if she wasn't able to make the prince fall in love with her, there would be consequences. Consequences? Yes. Namely, if the prince fell in love and married someone else, the mermaid's heart would break and she would dissolve into sea foam. Oh god. I cannot help but recoil. My expression must betray my horror because Emmeline quickly shakes her head. There's no need to be worried. Rod has said that this curse is different from the fairy tale. Are you sure? Are you 100% sure? I'm pretty sure he said that just to, like, not get you to worry about him. Can you believe him? Emily shrugs helplessly as she puts down her now empty glass of water. The fairy tale curse always twists the original curse, right? And besides, it's not as if Ray traded his voice for legs, and... 
I never heard of a cursed person that dies because they cannot break their curse. That may be true. Emily does not know what Red Rod traded his horse for. She does not know that he did it to become Prince for the Arthur. Prince Rod is already hiding things from her. Is it possible Rod will die the day the Arthur marries Besmond? Oh god, I wouldn't put it past it though. Later that day, I find Rod in the dining hall. He appears to be inspecting the seating arrangements for the night's banquet. He glances briefly to look at me before returning his attention to the placards with the guest names on them. What is it? I've been looking for you all morning. I'm distracting. Uh, distracted from what I am about to say when I notice Rod switching the position of two placards, I frown as I catch the name on one of them. He is moving the Bjorka's place at the table. Is he trying to make sure she shits as far away from him as possible? Surely you have better things to do than stay at the year. What happens if you cannot break your curse? Rod's movements stutter before he shakes his head sharply. That is something you do that deep to know. Hmm. I don't know, we've been through- This is chapter 8, man. I've been through you since chapter 3. Um... aches deep in my chest as Rod's coldness. Please! Rod startles so strongly that he almost drops the placard he's holding. Please tell me. We have been partners for months now. But I barely... Yes, I know that is unusual partnership and that most of our helping each other has been subtle, but... Deed away from breaking my curse while you seem to be no closer to breaking a curse than we had started. I will do whatever I can to help you with your curse, Rod. That was the right answer! Hell yeah! So please, let me help you. Silence falls. Moments later, Rod sighs and looks away from me. Some unspeakably sad emotion shines through his eyes. Even if I wanted your help, he said, there's nothing you could do. Dread settles in the pit of my stomach as Rod's words. Could I be right? Will Rod actually die if he does not manage to break his curse? Emily told me of the per uh, story of the little print mermaid. She said that the mermaid dies if the prince marries someone else. Rod, when Vyorka marries Desmond, Will you? My voice trails off when I hear the sound of the vo uh, door behind us. Is it Ophelia or the king? Rod rushes forward, drives me before I can glance back at the door. Ow! I become aware of the weight holding me down on the floor. The impact of the ground against my head blurs my vision, making it impossible for me to see what is happening at first. Am I underneath? Dining table? I struggle to s s try and sit up, but the weight pushes me down again, forcing me to stay still. Quiet. Er, quiet. Rod, why did you push me underneath the table? <gasps> oh my god, it's Mithros. Or, is it Alcaster? Uh, I'm about to ask him aloud when the sound of footsteps silences me. I cannot help but remember what Sir Mithros was saying about rumors. If Rod and I are seen together alone by servants, the rumors will no doubt get worse. Well, why is Rod doing this? I stay quiet as the people that enter the dining hall begin to talk. How strange for this place to be empty at this time of day. There's a pause, then another voice speaks up. You better have good news for me, Mithros. Oh my god, I'm right. Yep, 
It's her Alcaster and Mithros. Rod's hands tighten on my shoulders. Everything is as you requested, Sir Alcaster. There should be no issues. There better not be. You've disappointed me before, Mithros. I'll be careful not to try my patience again. Yes, Sir Alcaster. Sir Mithros sounds oddly subver subservient. But why? The two of them are both ranked equally, and neither of them should have to answer to anyone other than the king. Unless Sir Alcaster truly is the Grinch and is forcing Sir Mithros to obey him with a spell. Wait a few moments after I leave. We should not be seen together. I do not hear Sir Mithros respond, but I can hear Sir Alcaster leaving the room. Sir Mithros sighs out, but is otherwise silent when he leaves the room after a few moments. I exhale fully as the door finally closes behind Sir Mithros. This is bad. I was so engrossed with Sir Alcaster and Sir Mithros' conversation that I only now just realized that Rod is hovering over me. Hey, what's up? Oh, we even got us close up of Sebi. Uh, hey, are you alright? Are you hurt? You look a little, uh... Rod suddenly pauses and he notices our positions. He stares at me for a few moments, eyes wide. He scrambles out from underneath the dining table and by the time I do the same, he is standing far away from me, his gaze fixed on the wall. He is bright red. It'd be funny if I weren't sure if I was the same color. Rod clears his throat. Ugh. It seems that Sir Alcaster really is the witch, if he has the ability to make Sir Beethros obey him. Lady Parfait should be told immediately. Rod turns on his heels to leave the dining room. Rod, wait! But this is urgent, Princess, I just can't. When Viorco marries this one, will you die? Rod? pauses for a minute, but I can tell from his pained expression that he will not speak. Sebi! Yes! You're running out of time, Rod! Mai's eyes flip between Sebi and Rod. What does that mean? That day, he turns away from me once again and starts walking away. Rod! There must be something in my voice that makes... Rod stop because he turns to look at me. Please stop running away from this! What would Doi the answer achieve, Lucette? The Rod's words are harsh, harsh, his tone is soft. There's nothing, there's nothing anyone could do. Leave it alone, Lucette, it's for the best. I cannot help but get mad at Rod's dismissive tone, move toward him, frowning. How could you say something like that? You're not the only person that is that will be affected if you keep refusing to do anything to break your curse. That's true. Can you not can you imagine what your death will do to your sister? To your mother? Losing you will destroy them. Rod's face is suddenly inches away from mine as he places his hands to the wall behind me, caging me in. His face is flushed with anger, but the look in his eyes is tormented. My family has been dealing with the consequences of my actions for the majority of my life. Don't think that I don't know what effect my curse has on the people closest to me. Besides, I... I don't want to involve you in this too. His voice is a whisper, but I can still hear his words. God pushes me away. Away, uh, pushes away from me and stops off as I stare at him. He says that, but then he still does nothing to try and break his curse. I don't understand him. What is stopping him?
God is absent from the palace for the rest of the day and returns only once the sun has set to prepare for the ball. I'm gonna put on my supporters. It's getting pretty chilly right now, this morning. Uh, I have not been able to talk to him since, but I assume that he has been with, to the Martian to tell Delora and Parfait about our suspicions of Sir Alcaster being a witch. Isn't it a wizard? Or maybe he gender bent himself to become a man? I don't know. I hope they come up with an effective plan for dealing with him. The palace is not safe so long as he is here. The ball just about uh, the ball is just about to start with that evening, and I've been asked to make sure none of the guests are lost and wandering the halls. I've been walking around for a while directing any late guests in the right direction. That should be everyone. But as soon as I turned the corner, I noticed two people lingering by the column. Excuse me, the throne room is... Oh no. I pause when I look more closely at the two men in front of me. I recognize one of them instantly. Son of a bitch. What is Sir Alcaster doing outside the throne room? And just who's the man? Come on, really? They have the same eye color, the same hair, the same skin color. I mean, come on. It's Fritz. Ah, Lucette. Sir Alcaster gestures toward me, and I approach warily. No, it's not. No. This is not Varg. This is Fritz. This is Varg. He is one of the guests for the ball. Varg sweeps aside his capes as he bows. I curtsy and dip my head to hide my expression. I have not heard of Varg. Why would he be bound to a mere maid? Also, why is he wearing such an elaborate costume and mask? This is not a masquerade ball. If Varg is an acquaintance of Sir Alcaster, there is no telling what or who he truly is. Varg is the is one of the suitors for Princess Emmeline. Would you please escort him to the throne room? I will be along shortly. Fark's politeness even, is even more suspicious. Of course, Sir Alcaster. I meet Fark's gaze briefly. I cannot help but frown at the way he is smirking at me. This way. Fark and I make our way toward the throne room, but I cannot help but feel wary of the fact that he's falling behind me where I cannot see him. If the maids are this lovely, the princess must truly be beautiful. Fritz, what the hell are you doing? Varg laughs and I grit my teeth at the sound. What? It's a maid as a compliment. There's no need to me. There's no need to look at me like that. Varg looks at me curiously. Hmm. Are maids not allowed to speak in this palace? I have nothing to say. Not the most cheerful person on staff, are you? Thankfully, the doors to the throne room appear as soon as we turn a corner, and I do not have to come up with a response to his words. Here, here. I gesture toward the throne room and move to leave, but Varg's voice stops me. should, at the very least, escort me inside and introduce me to the princess, don't you think? Isn't that what a maid should do? Technically, that is the announcer's job. But Farg came so late, he probably only missed the introductions. I wouldn't want to think badly of any of the servants at the palace. I take a deep brow, uh, deep bow. I take a deep breath to calm myself down before turning toward the doors. <sighs> Follow me. I can tell the moment I step into the room that the official introductions have already passed. Most of the guests have already begun to mingle and scatter across the throne room as the band sets up. No one notices when I walk into the throne room in front of Varg. 
I don't trust her. Not if she's associated with Sir Alcaster. Oh shit. I might have time to warn someone about him while he is distracted, but who? Um. Who is this target? Attention is quickly drawn to where Emmeline is moving between groups of people, introducing herself and making light conversation. I know this will be frowned upon, but Emmeline's safety must come first. I make my way quickly to Emmeline and curtsy just off to the side, trying to draw as little attention to myself as possible. Princess Emmeline, may I have a word? Emmeline is clearly shocked at my intrusion, but she masks it well. Excuse me, it appears my maid has something for me. I drove close to her to the walls where the crowd blocks us from view. I wasn't expecting you to be here, Lucette. Not that I mind, but I won't... I won't... Wait, what? Not that I mind, but won't you get into trouble? There's no time for that. I took her hand in mine and look at her somberly. You have to watch out for this mask. Sir Alcaster brought him to the ball. Why should I be worried then? Oh shit. <laughs> I cannot exactly tell her that I think she's a witch right now. There are too many people watching. Please, just be wary of him. Oh, goddamn. Oh shit. I'm sure. I'm sure there's nothing to be worried about from anyone here, with set, especially if Sir Alcaster is involved. On the contrary, if Sir Alcaster is involved, I would be compelled to stay on your garden blade. Odd. I turn in shock to see Rod suddenly standing beside me. Oh yeah, hell yeah. You trust me, Seth. Oh fuck. Excuse me? I jump back at the sound of Varg's voice. Rod steps a step forward and places his hands on my shoulders to steady me. I don't believe we've been introduced. Varg looks at me for a few moments, but I say nothing. He eventually turns to Emily, a wolfish smile on his face. My name is Varg, and you must be Princess Emmeline. The tales of your beauty did not do you justice. Emmeline flushes at Varg reaches for her hand. He presses a kiss to the back of it, still grinning. I can feel Rod that's behind me. Understandably. Uh, may I have the first dance? Emmeline bites down on her lower lip as she, as she stares at him. I became acutely aware of just how quiet the throne room has become. Yeah, she can't refuse. She cannot refuse with so many people watching her. I feel sick, but cannot bring myself to say anything more as Emmeline puts her hand in Vard's. I accept, Lord Vard. Is he... a little... a little Red Riding Hood fairy tale? That's what's going on. Is he gonna eat her? Like physically devour her? Oh no. Oh no. The moment Emmeline makes her way to the center of the dance floor, a man signals to the band and the musician musicians start playing. This feels wrong. I can only nod as I watch Bart pull Emmeline closer. At first, it just seems he and Emmeline dancing, but the other couples gradually trickle in to join them. I don't like this at all! 
Ron and I watch in silence as the first dance continues on. I know for a fact that Rod must see the dreamy smile on Emmeline's face as certainly as I can. Uh, when the music stops, both of us move as one towards Emmeline. Even though the dance is over and Bard has released her, they still stand close together in the center of the room. The silence is interrupted. What? When the double doors open and Sir Alcaster, along with two knights, stalk into the center of the room where Emmeline and Bard stand. Their arrival causes an uneasy stir in the crowds. The king rises from his throne, eyebrows drawn. Sir Alcaster is... There's some kind of disturbance. Alcaster says nothing, at least. As the knights stationed around the room approach Emmeline and Varg and stand around them, encircling them. Emmeline's expression shifts from confusion to fear. The crowd becomes even more anxious. Alcaster, explain this. Alcaster briefly glances at him but says nothing. What? He turns back to his knights, snaps his fingers. The knights pull out their swords, point them to Emmeline. Eb! I reach out to grab Rod's hand before he can make his way towards her. Rod, it's too dangerous. I know, but... Thoughtless actions have the potential to put Emmeline in even more danger. Rod's only response is to tighten his grip on my hand. I grip, place my other hand over his to reassure him, and slowly but surely his grip begins to loosen. I turn my gaze back to the king. Alcaster, stop this immediately. What do you think you're doing? Oh, something I should have done a long time ago. I have been nothing but loyal to this kingdom, and all I have ever wanted was for Angiel to thrive. But ever since the queen died, this kingdom has become weak. It is because you are a weak ruler, Gennaro. What? The people... Oh my god, is this a coup? The people were more productive back then, more disciplined during the late queen's reign. The kingdom has become less productive without fear to drive them. When there is power, there is order. Power, power is not something that should be needlessly used to control people. It is used to protect them. You, of all people, should know that. Sir Alcaster shakes his head. I, of all people, know that order is what makes a hierarchy strong. I am only doing what is necessary. I am reorganizing the system. Hand over the crown, Gennaro. Oh, shit! Sir Alcaster turns his head to Varg, who remains standing beside the scared Emmeline. You will obey me if you do not want your precious, precious daughter armed. Please, leave my daughter out of this. Emmeline steps back, her eyes now brimming, brimming with tears. Varg, seize the princess! As soon as Sir Alcaster gives the order, Rod immediately lets go of my hand and rushes towards his sister. Rod, no! I quickly follow after him, but Rod suddenly stops in his tracks. I bump abruptly into his back. What? Varg! Sir Alcaster's booming voice echoes around the room, but which has suddenly gone eerily silent. My eyes move to Varg, but he's sent motionless. What is happening? <gasps> Fritz! Finally, Varg smirks. He steps to the side, standing in front of Emmeline, as if to block her from view. Sir Varg? Oh, oh shit! You must be delusional, old man. I'm not letting you anywhere near the princess. Knight's next movement are a blur as they rush at Sir Alcaster. In near moments, he has been dismar disarmed and pinned to the ground. Several, several more knights have been also appeared from behind to surround Sir Alcaster. A man emerges from in between the circle of knights. 
move to send the site park MM lane. Oh shit! What? Sir Mithros looks at Sir Alcaster disdainfully. What is this meaning of this, Mithros? We had a deal! The anger is now palpable in Sir Al Alcaster's flushed face. Did we now? Mithros, explain yourself. Sir Mithros drops to one knee in front of the king. Of course, your majesty. He raises his head slightly to look at the king. I have known for a long time that the man you see before you is a traitor. I was even aware of his plans but could not tell you of them without any evidence. Two of your knights have tried to inform you of these plans before, but we all looked down on them with disdain. I had to make sure that I did not come unprepared like they did. Oh shit, the two knights that- The two knights! Oh my god! The people- The, the ones in the Martian! Yes! Jurian and Garland? What? Both of them knew what Sir Alcaster's plan? Was that the reason why they were dishonorably discharged? For false accusations? I knew none of his plans. Uh, I knew none of his plan, and I could not thwart it. Uh, I knew enough of his plan that I could thwart it. This is why I thought the best way to reveal his dastardly ways was to craft a fake alliance with him. Sir Varg and I have been working together to unravel Alcaster's plans, Your Majesty. Varg is an invaluable accomplice. So wait, Sir Mithros has been pretending? To work with Sir Alcaster this whole time? Yeah, he's still suspicious in the book. And, and, uh, and so we arrive at the events of tonight. I apologize for undertaking this task without seeking your counsel, Your Majesty. But I can think of no better way of, to end this madness once and for all. You lying snake! Sir Mithro stands and turns to Alcaster. He gestures at him dismissively. Sees him. The knight's next movements are a blur. The men, the men rush Sir Alcaster all at once, and in mere moments, Alcaster has now been disarmed. Oh, yeah, I thought he was disarmed and pinned. Isn't Sir Alcaster a witch? Why isn't he using his magic? Me throws. I am indebted to you for saving us. The whole kingdom is- Oh shit, I think this is his plan. Mithros is definitely the witch. I only did what's necessary, your majesty. The king glances at the knights, then at Alcaster, his gaze steely. Take him away. Sir Alcaster struggles uselessly, uselessly against the knights as they drag him away. He's nearly out the door when they start when he starts screaming at the king. Oh, here we go. Genario, you fool! That man is a witch! A snake! You cannot trust him! No, Alcaster, I was wrong to put my trust in you. Even as Sir Alcaster is pulled away from the world, you can hear him babbling in the hallways about a witch. to escape. Is he truly not a witch? Are you alright, princess? I am pulled from my thoughts when I hear Varg's voice. He is now trying to comfort a, comfort a shaken Emmeline. For a few moments, he looks away and his eyes meet mine. He smiles but is fleeting and moments later, his intention is back on Emmeline. While it comes to an end, and after Alcaster's stunt, he is thrown into a jail cell and promised to trial after a few days' time where he will be tried for treason against the kingdom. I still can't believe Sir Alcaster would do something like that, and so brazenly too. I wonder, what happened to Sir Fitch? Come on, guys! They say he vanished completely last night. Do you... Do you think he was working with his father? No! No! The truth is, I, 
have no idea what to think. I thought that I had everything figured out, but now I'm more and more confused by, uh, by the moment. Fritz is always loyal to a fault, but then Sir Alcaster was the same with the king, and I have not seen or heard of for Fritz for years. Oh my god. Look, I'm tired. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I have not seen or heard of Fritz for weeks. I cannot really say. There he is! Fritz. Ah, good morning, Prince Emily. Sir Vard. Vard was offered a room at the palace for a few days' visit. He has been treated as Sir Mithras's valued guest. I have heard from the other servants that he is Sir Mithros' relative who lives in a neighboring kingdom. I hope you are feeling well now, Princess. Yes. Thank you for your help last night. Is... Is Emmeline... Wishing? I know I won't be here long, but I do hope to get to know you better during the duration of my stay. I... I... would love that. Then, I'm looking forward to spending more time with you. Forget I am meant to be in your mother's room right now. Lucette, Tervard, I'll see you both later. I curtsy as Emmeline walks off, leaving me alone with Barb. I cannot help but feel uneasy in his presence. Something about him puts me on the edge. He makes me feel uncomfortable. Excuse me. Excuse me, I have errands to attend to. Wait. Before you head out, I have something to give you. Give me? His bark, a Vark reaches into one of his pockets and redraws, withdraws a letter that he holds out to me. No seal? What is this about? Hmm, well, I guess you'll have to open it about. Open it and find out, princess. My blood turns to ice in my veins. He knows I'm a princess, cause it's Fritz! That could only mean he is... I have no idea what you're talking about. Excuse me. I'm about to to leave when Barbie someone grabs my wrist. The play is just about to start, princess. You have a responsibility as the main character is to perform impeccably until the very end. Otherwise, well... He grins at me, it is the same wolfish grin that he flashed at me during the ball. You might miss out on your fairy tale ending. What? Before I can say anything, I feel a hand grip my other arm. Someone tugs me back away from Vard, then come to stand in front of me. Stay away, Barbara. What? Vard looks at Rod, then at me, his smile growing even more crooked. What an interesting turn of events. I wonder how this will end for the both of you. Tell me, Lucet, what do you see to you? Oh boy, this is a tough one. My gut is going with dot dot dot. I'm going with dot dot dot. No answer. Hmm? Be in denial all you want. At the end of the day, you're going to have to decide who and what you will choose. Who or what to choose? Silence. Wait, did I choose the right answer? You are harassed. Oh wait, silence. Except the phone is back. Ah, my throat! Silence. You are harassing one of our staff members. Of course. I apologize for my rude behavior, your highness. You seem to know a lot about us. Are you a... I lower my voice. You're a 
asking the wrong person, princess. He knows who you really are? I think you two are worrying too much about me. After all, I'm just a pawn in this game. Rog dips in an elegant bow and flashes one last smile before walking away. He actually revealed a lot. Especially when I looked closely at his cane, it's definitely a wolf. So he's definitely the little red riding hood wolf. That explains the facade. Are you alright? I am. Thanks to you for helping me. You know, I do edit for edit for you. What? What? Rod shakes his head before stepping away. Anything for me? Rod coughs before uh, pulling me from the top. <clears throat> it is possible that he is a witch, or that he is working with other witches, but we have no evidence to prove it. If we will figure out what's going on, you can be the wary of him. I know. Rod smiles at me gently. The look makes my heart thud once painfully in my chest. Stop staring at me like that. Rod looks away, his cheeks tinged red. I feel my own cheeks warm at the sight. I wasn't staring at all. <laughs> oh, such a cute couple. Both of you are hopeless. <laughs> yeah, high five, Sebi. Shut up, Sebi. Rod gives one last look before finally turning and walking away. I place my hand over my chest where I can still hear my thudding heartbeat. This feeling... If it is what I think it is, then I have no right to feel that way about him. He is my stepbrother. I shake my head to clear the thought, then glance down at the letter that Varg just delivered to me. There is one sentence written on it. Oh shit. Come to the throne room alone tonight. And that's where I'm gonna end it. Uh, thank you for watching part three of uh, Day Two with Rod and figuring what the heck is going on. Um And uh, the story is unfurling, uh, but still there's a lot of questions piling up. Um, but for sure, Mithros is the witch. Uh, Varg is... Varg is Fritz. And I think his curse is that whenever he wears a mask, he turns into this uh, thing, like a lie. And without a mask, he turns back into Fritz, like a little Fritz. Um, I'm pretty sure if Rod's curse goes unchecked. I don't think he'll die, but I think he'll like disappear disappear from everyone's memories or some something cruel like that. Um, and maybe the royal family will fall apart. And yeah, there doesn't seem to be a time limit. Our dear Lucette's curse. Unless the time limit is uh, her turning 18 uh, once she becomes the bearer of TB or Tenebrorum. Uh, let's see. What are the things that we learned? Um, 
Emmeline is slowly falling in love with uh, Varg. I feel like Varg is his split personality of Fritz whenever he's wearing a mask. Maybe, maybe. Let's see. It's kind of sad that all the other routes are like completely gone in terms of appearances. We haven't seen the otaku uh, who lost his memories or the gender bending karma. First not actually gender bending. He's not actually wearing anything that's like saying that I'm a woman. But he is wearing lipstick, so I'm gonna say the deceitful karma and Peter Pan. Uh, what was his name? For some reason, I thought his name was Wade. It's not Wade. Uh, the dark-haired, uh, red-eyed guy. That's the Peter Pan curse. Um, Alcaster was. Uh, field to be a traitor, no surprise there, but he's definitely a pawn in Mithros' plan. So that Mithros climbs up in the ladder and so he's less suspicious in the eyes of the king. Mm. Yeah, since this is the wedding, it means that it is going to finalize our four rods. Eight. So we'll see when that, when that happens. And we'll see what the heck happens in the throne room. So uh, thank you for watching, and um, I'll see you in the next part. Ooh, it's gonna be juicy, I can feel it. Juicy is a tender, medium rare steak. That actually sounds really good. I'm gonna make myself a parfait. Um, I'll see you guys later. Have a good one. Bye!